Hello everybody, this is the Structures Guy, and today we're talking about the structural engineering of data grid structures. The rapid growth of urban population, the lack of space in cities, and the high cost of land have all led developers to focus on building vertically as opposed to horizontally. As the height of the building increases, the lateral load resisting system becomes more important than the gravity load resisting system. The most common lateral load resisting systems are rigid frame system, shear wall system, brace tube system, and outrigger system. However, the diagonal structural system has become more common these days for tall steel buildings due to its structural efficiency and aesthetic look provided by the unique geometric configuration of the system. Diagrid is an exterior structural system where all perimeter vertical columns are eliminated and consist of only diagonal members or sloped columns on the exterior of the building. Diagrid can also be seen as a particular form of space truss, which is, which is created by intersecting the diagonal and the horizontal components similar to a typical truss. Beyond its eye-catching aesthetic value, the formwork of diagonal members provide some structural benefits such as providing strength and stiffness to the buildings, particularly those with complex geometries. The configuration and efficiency of a diagonal system reduce the number of structural elements required on the facade of the building, therefore less obstruction to the outside view and allowing more natural light. The structural efficiency of a diagonal system can also help in avoiding interior and corner columns, therefore allowing significant flexibility with the floor plan and gives the opportunity to open spaces. A diagrid usually requires up to 20% less structural steel than a conventional steel frame. The reason for using less structural steel is that diagrid structures do not need high shear rigidity cores because shear can be carried by the diag diagrid located on the perimeter. These days, diagrid is becoming more common, especially in long span and high rise buildings particularly for complex geometries and curved shapes, but still less common than other structural systems. When designing a diagrid structure, it is important to optimize the diagrid angle to maximize structural efficiency to achieve the most efficient design. It is important to note that the optimal diagrid angle depends on the height of the building. As the height of the building increases, the optimal diagrid angle increases as well. Since there are no perimeter columns, the diagonal members in diagonal structures are designed to, to resist both shear and moment forces. It is known that the optimal angle for columns to resist bending moment is 90 degrees, and the optimal angle for diagonals to resist shear forces is about 35 degrees. As a result, the optimal angle for diagonal structures usually fall in between both of these, which is about 60 to 75 degrees. One important factor when designing diagrid structures is the node, which are defined to be the intersections or the connections of the diagonals. Those nodes need to resist vertical loads and horizontal shear. The nodes are joined by means of bolting or welding, depending on the diagrid structure. It is known that the structure is as strong as its weakest link which is why nodes have to be designed properly to ensure structural safety. Both the engineering and fabrication of the joints or nodes are more complex than of orthogonal structures. Usually, to save money, the nodes are connected by means of bolts, not welds, as welding costs more to perform on the field and takes more time to complete. The vertical and horizontal loads in diagonal structures are transferred in form of axial loads from the diagonal members above the node to the node, which is made up of plates and bolts, to the diagonal members below the node in form of tension and compression. Due to this load transfer path, the shear forces developed at the node or the connection are very high due to the lateral loads, which means the bolts in the connection need to be designed carefully. 
There are various benefits of using delicate structures such as mostly carbon-free exterior and interior, generous amount of daylighting, roughly one-fifth reduction in structural steel used, simple construction techniques, similar design and connection as typical moment frame, free, clear, and open floor plans, aesthetically expressive, and better ability to redistribute load than a moment frame. There are other benefits, but those are the main ones. However, there are some drawbacks to Diagrid's frames, such as Diagrid is not a thoroughly explored design when applied to large-scale high-rises. Construction workers have little or no experience for constructing this structural system, since it is not as common these days. It is hard to design windows that create a regular language from floor to floor, and architectural look is only limited to decorates. In conclusion, the design and construction of decorate structure offer a lot of benefits and a few drawbacks, which make this system great when used for the right conditions. However, those benefits and drawbacks need to be researched more, as the system is not common as other structural systems. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned more about decorate structures. See you next time!